Welcome back to another amazing Storytime series video with me, your host, Louise Pentland. That's fireworks. Yes, hi, thank you for coming back to my channel. Don't forget that I also make videos on my other channel, Sprinkler Chatter, and my book, just there. That's, that's the word. That's not actually my book, that's just a piece of paper wrapped around another book. There, there you go. Secrets abound for you. Um, it's available to pre-order now, so please do pick yourself one up. Today's story has a trigger warning. If you are funny about sick, then you might not like this video because I'm here with Katie, shout hello. Hello. Is there a word for it's it? It's called emetophobia. a metaphobia. A metaphobia. She has a metaphobia, which is a fear of... Sick. Sick. Vomit. Yeah, okay. So you're gonna really enjoy this yeah. story. <laughs> I'm sorry. So this um, happened to me in 2015. All of these stories that I've been doing across the month doing two a week. Monday's 8 p.m. and Wednesday's 8 p.m. It's in chronological order. So this was 2015 May time. So I had a really, really bad toothache. It was my wisdom tooth. It was a Wednesday when it started really hurting. In fact, this tooth started hurting at the premiere of that film with the rock in about the earth. It's San Andreas Fault or just San Andreas. I went to that premiere, I'm gonna insert a picture here of me in the blue dress, looking gorgeous, I like to think. And I went to that with the girl who came on that date, that threesome date. Yeah, this is all just, all just stringing together, isn't it? We were at that premiere and all of a sudden I had like blinding pain in my tooth. Like not just like, oh, I need to get that checked out or oh, that's a numb pain. Like I need to leave this cinema theater immediately and get some painkillers for this. So very guiltily, I left the cinema before everyone else. I've never seen the end of a San Andreas film. Let me know what happens, please. We went to get some uh, just painkillers um, from Boots and that night it did hurt a bit, but the pain kind of went away, which led me to Thursday and I went home to Northampton. Now, top tip for you, ladies and gentlemen, if your tooth hurts, you need to see a dentist straight away because that pain that went away will come back my god will it come back it got to thursday evening late afternoon like five ish and the pain came back and it came back with the force of like imagine someone with a screwdriver going arr, arr, in your jaw kate is like arr. it was agonizing and i rang my dentist surgery but unfortunately that weekend it was like the may bank holiday so friday saturday sunday monday they were shut so the first appointment i could get was the tuesday as it happened, this isn't part of the story, but I went to see an emergency dentist before then because I could not, I couldn't wait. So Friday, agonizing pain. I would say it was on the same pain scale as pushing a baby out of my vagina. That's how painful it was. And I was on my own. I'd just recently broken up with um, the guy that I lived with, my, my ex-husband. And so I had no one to take care of me. Darcy was with her dad that weekend as well. So I was like, all like scared and frightened and alone and I went to the chemist and I bought some really strong painkillers. This video by the way touches on taking too many painkillers. Don't do that. Like it, the story is funny but taking too many painkillers is not funny at all and I was so stupid. So what happened was I took the designated amount of tablets that it says on the box and the pain didn't go away. All tablets really affect me a lot, even like very basic ones like ibuprofen or paracetamol make me feel a little bit woozy and weird. So I don't know if I'm just sort of affected a bit different or whatever. And I started not thinking straight and I was on my own. So I wasn't like talking to anyone about like, is this a good idea? And I remember specifically thinking when I was in the haze of these very strong, like over the counter tablets, hmm, if, Zoe would be allowed to take two. Zoe's half the size of me, so I should be allowed to take four. That is not how tablets work. It doesn't go on body mass. It goes on like, it's like your organs and your liver and stuff, like don't do it. So I took another two and I carried on doing this all night, like just kind of not really sticking to the guidelines as what I should have done. I didn't like take loads and loads and loads and loads. But every now and again, even though I hadn't reached the four hour mark, I'd be like, oh, I just have one. Because I was in so much pain. I couldn't eat because my mouth hurt. Like this part of the story is not fun. This is just like really sad and depressing. 
The next day I had to go and talk at an event in London and I woke up and the pain had subsided a little bit, probably because I was like full of painkillers, but I still didn't feel good and I couldn't think straight. Like I couldn't work out what time I needed to get the train and things like that. And I rang my dad and I was like, oh, I don't feel very well. I don't know that I should go. And my dad is like one of these like push, push, push. You do it, you work hard, you put a thousand percent into everything. No excuses, winners don't quit, quitters don't win, all that business. So he was like, no, people are relying on you. The event has sold tickets. People have paid money for these tickets to come and hear you speak. So I was like, you're right, you're right. People are relying on me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go. So I got on the train and on the train, by the way, some of you might have heard this story because I did it in my Louise Live 2015 live show. So if you've already heard this, sorry. So I got on the train and started to feel these like waves of sickness coming over me. And like waves is the best way to describe it because it would start like in my thighs and be like wash over me. And I'd feel like really hot and really dizzy and really woozy. And I was like, whoa, I do not feel good at all. And so I took another painkiller. By then it was all right too, because it had been enough time, but obviously it wasn't all right too because I'd taken too many in the night, like my body needed a break from basically putting, like painkillers are drugs, aren't they Katie? Like it's a, it's a drug and I was putting that in my body and I shouldn't have been. And it was like desperation and I wasn't thinking straight, blah, blah. I tried to stay calm and I messaged my dad again. I was like, dad, I think I'm gonna get off at Milton Keynes, which is like the next stop away from me. I need you to come pick me up. I cannot make it to this thing. And he was like, no, you can do it. You're just being dramatic. You can do it. Like, I hope you're sorry, dad. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna get there. I'm gonna like wipe the sweat. I was like dripping in sweat. And I'm not a sweaty person. I'm like the Sahara Desert. Like if you touch my armpit now, you could light a match on that. It's so dry. I was like, oh God, I don't feel good. I got to Euston Station and Natalie, who is my, was my old Charlotte, she works at Gleam, came to meet me and took one look at me and was like, no, you don't look good. Like I had a really nice dress on, but I was, I'd sweated all my makeup off and my hair was like stuck to me and I was like, I am ready to go do the talk. And she was like, no. Also, I was talking like this because of, I was like, hello, I'm ready to go do the talk. And she was like, no, no. And she said, have you eaten anything? I was like, I can't, I can't chew anything, Natalie. So she gave me this like berry smoothie, this big berry smoothie for like the nutrients. I was like, oh, thank you, Natalie. And I got back on the train to go home. And I was like, oh, good. Everything's gonna be fine. Cause I'm back on the train, I'm going home. So I'm getting to bed, I'm gonna call the emergency dentist and I'm gonna solve this problem. Everything's gonna be fine. Well, it wasn't bloody fine, was it? I sat on this packed train on a Saturday. London Midland trains, you might be familiar, have normal carriages where the seats are like two, 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 two. Or there's one carriage where the seats go along the side and there's a toilet in the corner with a curved door that goes like whoop, whoop, whoop. And also people with like bicycles and stuff like that and push chairs can go in that. I couldn't find any seats in the seat, seat, seat. So I sat on the side ones. I was like, well, that's good because I'm near the toilet because I'd started by then to feel a bit nauseous. Now I'm not a sicky person. I'm not sick very often. I mean, if anything, I I'm a diarrhea. Hi, my name is Louise. I'm a diarrhea person. <laughs> I'll diarrhea more than I'll sick. Whoops, I dropped a pen. As if I've just said, I, <laughs> I am a diarrhea person. I don't diarrhea all the time either. I'm just saying one or the other. I'm probably gonna shoot from below rather than be sick. Nice. We've got it, we've all got it. So being sick for me is an event. Anyway, I'm sat on the train like this and it's going along and I'm like, oh God, and I'm sweating. Um, and there's a man opposite me like sucking his teeth at me and going, yes. And I was like, is this what gets you, is it? I start to think, yeah, like I'm probably going to be sick soon. I was sat here, the toilet was like here like like where the camera is now I can't reach the camera because it's quite far but like honestly not far away so I was like the minute I feel like I'm gonna be sick I'm just going to get up push the button go into the toilet do my business and then sit back down and just I just need to get this train changed it's only an hour from here in Northampton to London so I got that like sorry Katie <laughs> that like tight feeling in my throat where I was like yeah it's gonna it's gonna happen so I stood up and I miscalculated because I thought I could press the button and get straight in. No, it's the door that goes rather than like jump. So I push the button and I can't go, but I start to be sick. And I went, and just a little bit 
shot out my mouth. They're just like a tablespoon of them. And I was like, oh, oh. I started to panic. Like, I, oh, oh, like this, with my hands over my mouth. The door finally opens. I throw myself in. And I'm like looking around for the button to shut it. I can't find that button anywhere. But <laughs> like sticking into my hands by this point, sit coming through my fingers. I look and I can see the toilet is there and it's open. The, the seat of the toilet is splattered in piss. Like some man has gone in there and like waggled his dick all over the shop and just done a piss party everywhere. It's all on the floor, it's everywhere. I don't know whether like the train moved as he was going or whatever, but he didn't wipe it. I didn't even get to my knees. I just went, <laughs> just stood there with the door open and all these passengers that were sat on the train just sat there like, <laughs> well, I just did that. And to make it worse, I'd had that berry drink. So my sick was like, deep red so it looked like I was just stood up with my hands on my knee just going uh, vomit red vomit looked like blood and then I just knelt down on the pissy floor in my beautiful dress put both my hands on the piss scene and just just carried on going and then this really nice lady was like shall I shut the door for you I was like (laughs) yeah I just had to do it in front of everyone. She shut the door and then I finished and wiped the piss off my arms. And then I just sat there crying. Like, this isn't funny. Just sat crying my eyes out. Texting some friends and texting Natalie from Gleam just being like, I don't feel well. I'm so alone. No one's here to take care of me. I'm going home to an empty house. I'm alone. This is the worst moment of my life. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Eventually I got home. I got an appointment with my dentist and he took my tooth out and... It all turned out fine, but the moral of the story is read the back it, the back it, <laughs> the back of packets of tablets and be sensible with them. Otherwise, you will be ill and you might well be ill in front of lots of strangers. To the lady who shut the door, when I sat back back down in my seat after she'd seen me like have one of the lowest moments of my life, she looked over at me and said, I love your videos, by the way. And that's what I was like. <sighs> that's great thanks so much um but if you're watching because you watch my videos thank you for shutting that door i'm sorry you had to see me do that (laughs) i'm sorry i did it there we are that is the story of the time i was violently sick in public uh it's not a pretty story but it is a thing that's happened to me I will be back again on wednesday at 8 p.m and i'll be talking about just checking my notes a date and urine. Not all of these stories are about bodily fluids, I will just tell you. (laughs) It just seems to be that that's where the worst things ever happen. So I'll see you back here on this channel Wednesday at 8pm. Don't forget my book just there. Please do pre-order it. It is a fiction full of things like this. Our main character, Robin, um, gets into all sorts of scrapes. So you will definitely like it if you liked this video. And please do share this video and subscribe and all that great stuff. See you on Wednesday, 8pm. Thanks for watching. Bye.